I've given you, I've given you. Well, John the Baptist, man, if he was the equivalent of a rock and roll singer, he would have been you two at the best because he preached against hypocrisy amongst the religious dudes. He preached about the need to repent and to care about the poor. I mean, John was fantastic. He was courageous. Mate, he rocked it when it came to preaching. And then all of a sudden, Jesus comes. And nobody wants to hear him anymore. And you guys are performers. You know what I mean. When you're wired to perform, it's not just an ego. It's not an arrogant thing, but you're wired for it. You want to serve your audience. You, you want the people listening to you to feel that they've enjoyed what they're getting. And there's, there's, there's stuff there. You know that, Woody. There's, there's a connection thing for people that are performers. What does it do when you completely lose all of that? John the Baptist lost it all. Not only that, and I mean, he intrigued. The very people that put him in jail used to like to hear him. They were so intrigued by him. And they jail him. And you know the story. There was stuff going on, incestuous relationships going on. That was part of the whole Herodian family. They were full of this stuff. And of course, John the Baptist, mate, you talk about angry songs. He sang an angry song and he got straight in their face about the way they were living. And so he got put in jail. And of course, one of the women involved in this incestuous relationship was very angry. And her daughter, you remember, was a really sexy dancer and uh, really got into the eyes of the man in charge. And he was so besotted, he offered anything she wanted. And mum said, ask him for John the Baptist's head on a plate. I don't know about you, but the man that Jesus said was the greatest man that had ever lived till that time. Well, I want to say, Jesus, how can a man like that have his head taken off and stuck on a plate and handed out in a party? I mean, that is so undignified. I mean, shoot him or something, but it just seems to be just absolutely wrong. As wrong as I felt about what was happening to JB and worse. And so he's in prison, he's awaiting that execution. And nobody wants to hear him anymore. He's just got a couple of his road crew are still hanging around. And he says to him, will you go and talk to Jesus? Maybe I was wrong. Will you go and talk to Jesus? And just ask him, are you really the Messiah? The one I said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Will you go and ask him if he really is the one? Or should I be looking for someone else? Now, man, that makes my gut move. A man of his kind of courage, a man who'd stood up against people that could take his head off like that and who did, to lose his nerve, he must have felt so depressed. And when I see my mate committing suicide so depressed, I know that doesn't necessarily mean ungodliness. I think we're past the day when we think if you're a godly person, you can't suffer depression. I think we're well past that now. I think we're much more sensible. We understand that. John the Baptist is depressed, as my mate was. Is he the Messiah? And I want to finish this story tonight with this. Jesus actually went away for a bit on his own because he loved his cousin. And he was devastated after John was executed. We hear he went off to be on his own. He was hurting. Why he didn't step in, I don't know. But he was certainly hurting. But just before that was to happen, when the doubts were given, and a couple of the road crew turned up and said, Jesus, our mate John the Baptist is in prison. He's likely to be executed, but he wants to know, did he make a mistake? Are you really the one? Are you the main man? Are you the son of God? Are you the one that's been sent to save the world? And Jesus said, you go tell John. 
simply this. Go tell John what you've heard me saying and what you've seen me doing. And I tell you folks, if you watch us in the church, if you watch my life for all of it, you'd have enough reason if you want to be a cynic to say, well, Smitty, you did this, you did that. If you want to watch the Popes, well, I've been, just been reading about the Popes in the 1400s, mate, and about Savonarola, who they hung and burnt to a crisp and shed his ashes on the Arno River because he spoke out against Popes that were siring children and all sorts of stuff going on. If you want to look at the church, you can find enough reason, if you want to be negative, to give up on it all. If you want to look at the best of the church, like hospitals, that's where hospitals came from in the first centuries. If you want to look what the church did in the first three centuries to give dignity to women. If you want to see how the church stopped infanticide that was legally acceptable if it was a girl baby in the Roman Empire. If you want to look at what happened during the Methodist days when they went out to stop slavery and stop the conditions that were going on in, in prisons. There's enough to believe in too. But in the end you can find enough crap on the way through to be cynical but you can't find it in Jesus buddy read the story read the story read the story get the story right don't make one up the story of Jesus is one who can say check out what I said and check out what I did and it won't be imperfect like your life and my life and that's what the message was to John the Baptist Jesus said you tell him what you see, that the blind are getting their sight back, that broken people are being healed. And more than that, you go tell him that the good news of God's love is being preached to the poor. It's no longer to the nice guys sitting in a synagogue in the church. These are the guys. This is the message that goes out to the rock and roll kids at the concerts. This is the message that goes to the headquarters of the Hells Angels. This is a message that goes to homeless people. This is a message that goes to those who are depressed and broken and suffering from mental illness. Go tell him that the good news is preached to the poor, not just to those that have got their stuff together, but to those who haven't. And that's why that's why the story of Jesus has got me and has kept me for so many years with all the failings and weaknesses. I recommend to you tonight the greatest story of all time. The story of one who said to John the Baptist, check out what I do and check out what I've been saying and check out who I've been saying it to. If you're not a Christian here tonight, look at the story of Jesus and you'll find an answer you won't find any place else. And if you are a Christian tonight, remember that our calling is to be like him. That's why we went to the outdoors. That's why I went to get involved in rock and roll music and all sorts of stuff like that. Because if I'm going to say I believe the story, the story is that he said, follow me, follow me follow me so he's a friend of the outcasts and I'm going to follow him then I'm going to be a friend of the outcasts and while the church can be all singing the happy songs on Sunday morning the JB's with their Jimi Hendrix dogs have a right to hear the good news Jesus wants to send us to them and for those of you that are believers Read the story, not just so that you may think how great it was the day you accepted Jesus. How great it was to know that you had your way to heaven, but greater than that, how great it was to feel the power within you to overcome your own weaknesses and failings. To find love where there was doubt and fear before. But beyond that, read the story and know that it's not good enough to just be glad you met him. It's only good enough if having met him, you follow him all the days of your life.